plan. Unlocking it, be tethered to it. Sounds like a plan. I'll be ready to verify when you get done. Okay. Houston Atlantis, uh, if you have some quick words in WVS, uh, we'd be happy to take them. Copy, uh, and for Marsha on the WVS page on the screen, uh, the telemetry page. Uh, if she's cleared the message, could you let us know in the two blocks for RF camera system telemetry and transceiver telemetry uh, if you're getting M's on all the data or if part, part of the data where the M's are and alongside which uh, information is missing? Okay, on the telemetry page, I have no M's, but where the Carlos cam should be, I have three question mark dash one. There are numbers, however, in everybody else's columns. So both columns are making numbers. So I think it may be an ID problem. Okay, Bob, there's my uh, safety tether. I'll bring it your way. Destiny module, these launch to activation heaters uh, basically were uh, keeping the uh, module itself thermally balanced while it's in the payload bay of the shuttle. So those uh, heater cables uh, have now been removed in preparation for the uh, unbirth of the uh, laboratory, which is scheduled a little bit later uh, in the spacewalk uh, this morning. Tom Jones has prepared the uh, manual berthing mechanism on the Z-1 truss, and Marsha Ivins is now moving in with the uh, shuttle's robot arm attached to that uh, shuttle docking port called a pressurized mating adapter. 
and he's basically uh, along the side of the uh, Z1 truss, providing her with uh, a on-the-scene visual cue, and Tom Jones there with a red stripe around the pant legs of his suit uh, that will distinguish him from uh, his colleague Bob Kerbeam throughout uh, today's spacewalk, which is now 50 minutes uh, in duration. Looks good. Pitch looks good. And the yaw, I can't really see any errors in either. Starting to draw the trajectory of the plungers and alignment pins, and they look acceptable. Alignment guides are going to drop right over the ones on the MDM, no problem. Okay, about 30 inches. 32 on my numbers, you're good. Z1 is right, off to the right, well clear on the tray. Good right now. Roger that. You're going to get the uh, two PRDs from it and stow the large trash bags. Roger. And Marsha, I'm right uh, below the uh, RMS. Uh, give me a few until I call you for clearance. Okay, I'm ready to ungrab. I'll wait for you to tell me to go. Okay, yeah, just be a minute. And Tom Jones uh, translating around the uh, circumference of the Unity module. This view looking from the back end of uh, Atlantis's payload bay looking toward the uh, Unity module and the uh, basically the uh, berthing mechanism uh, to which the Destiny Laboratory will uh, be permanently located uh, before the day is over. He uh, did a visual inspection to make sure that there was no obstruction whatsoever before um, before the uh, Destiny module is uh, lifted into uh, position. And now he's moved back up uh, to the Z1 truss out of the way and uh, Marsha Ivans will prepare to uh, unlatch the grapple fixture on the uh, on the PMA, the pressurized mating adapter, now that it firmly is attached uh, to the uh, manual berthing mechanism on the Z1 element. And uh, the next step will be for her to uh, complete the ungrapple and then go and uh, grapple the uh, Destiny Laboratory itself in preparation for uh, its unberthing from the payload bay uh, of Atlantis. This view now from one of the uh, forward cameras in the shuttle's payload bay uh, looking toward the uh, latches as uh, Marsha Ivans begins the process of slowly and deliberately uh, raising the uh, Boeing-built uh, laboratory destiny out of the payload bay of the shuttle. A very slow, deliberate process uh, as uh, the destiny is uh, just about to... Uh, arrive at its permanent home. The uh, berthing port on the Unity module of the International Space Station.
Simon, just to keep track, I left an adjustable there. As you probably know. Understand. Okay, Roman, uh, cinch number uh, five here will not break either with the power tool. Do you have another higher torque setting to go to? I'd rather try a higher tool setting before going to ratchet. Uh, no, we don't, Tom. Uh, we're going to have to do the manual method. Okay, give me a minute. Destiny now being raised to what's known as the low hover position. And I'll just remind you, power off and ratchet counterclockwise. MTL torque still at 30.5. That's confirmed. And Roman, I know the uh, warning about the uh, fish. And once uh, Destiny is uh, maneuvered to a low hover position, it then will be raised uh, to what's called the pitch around uh, position. The uh, laboratory actually will be uh, basically turned 180 degrees so that the uh, berthing mechanism on the other end or the far end in this view will be actually the, uh, the end that will dock to the uh, Unity module. The laboratory is basically launched in this configuration for uh, center of gravity or CG uh, issues uh, for the shuttle's uh, climb to orbit and for uh, landing constraints uh, in the event that the shuttle uh, mission had to be aborted and that the lab had to be brought home. It also has to do with the locations of uh, the cabling as the uh, lab is uh, powered uh, in the payload bay in terms of the heaters that were mentioned earlier that uh, Bob Kerbeam uh, released that were basically managing the thermal uh, balance of the uh, laboratory or destiny uh, while it was in Atlantis's payload bay. I am tethered to the forward gimbal lock. And in the meantime, we hear Bob Kerbeam. Uh, he's up at the space-to-ground antenna, the large dish antenna uh, that will provide uh, television pictures from the station once it's activated on the next flight. This view down the uh, left side of Atlantis's payload bay as uh, Bob Kerbeam is uh, assisting Marsha Ivins as she... Uh, As she brings the uh, Destiny Laboratory up out of the payload bay of uh, Atlantis, now that uh, she's basically got a set of eyes uh, helping her with the alignment as she uh, carefully uh, raises the laboratory up out of the payload bay. to the work site uh, on the Z1 truss so where he will assist uh, Tom Jones with continuing to release the gimbal locks on the uh, KU band antenna for the International Space Station. I can see it coming out of the bay. Uh, since Marsha Ivins does not have a uh, direct line of sight to the uh, location.
Houston, Atlantis, the labs in pre-install. We're working the SCS solution right now. Copy. Thanks for the update. A little dark out, and I'm looking for that demo line. And I'm down, I'm down by the uh, toolbox next to the boom. Was it down that far? And the arm now is in motion for the uh, final uh, approach, the final... Uh, Movement of the uh, Destiny Laboratory in for, for docking to the common berthing mechanism. The berthing mechanism freed up earlier this morning by the removal of a shuttle docking port, which is now temporarily stowed on the Z-1 truss. Come down past the trunnion pin and continue on that angle piece. Yeah. It's right there on 6046. All right. I see your feet. All three sits cycled and off. Uh, Understand? Just make sure that these sit thermal covers are secure on the fish trainer, please. You can go ahead and relocate those yeah, right. to the uh, APFR over there in the nose. Okay. Okay. And for both of you, the lab is two feet away and moving. Gotcha. Yeah, I ran out of chat here. I'm going to have to go back up and reroute. Beginning to see on the displays uh, the ready to latch indications of uh, destiny as it uh, is pushed into the uh, uh, latch mechanism of the common berthing mechanism on the Unity module. And we do have confirmation of four ready to latch indications. Call uh, coming at 12.57 p.m. Central Time as the shuttle and station complex fly high above uh, Australia. The Destiny Laboratory uh, completing the long road uh, from Huntsville, Alabama's uh, manufacturing facility by Boeing all the way to Florida and now to the International Space Station. First stage uh, capture of the uh, Destiny module now in work as uh, displays indicating the uh, latches are uh, being closed. And up to you, Beamer. You have a little bit of time. You might want to do some photo documentation now. Thanks for that heads up. And so 
as you were saying, uh, the only task that we show is uh, the need to relocate uh, that one APFR, which you're going to need for the fluids. And I can't do that. Oh, uh, put on. Right. And we do have confirmation that the first stage capture is complete. Uh, the go now is uh, for the second stage capture here shortly. That will be the uh, initial uh, boat loading. Of the uh, 16 bolts that are the run the circumference of the common berthing mechanism. Information of second stage capture now complete uh, on the common berthing mechanism on the active side, which is at the top of the picture with the Unity node. Now the uh, in progress or about to be in progress is the uh, driving of the uh, 16 bolts that will uh, complete the. Uh, the installation of destiny to the uh, International Space Station. Displays uh, here in Mission Control showing the uh, 16 bolts uh, now being electrically driven to complete the uh, the seal between the uh, Destiny Laboratory and the Unity module, the uh, International Space Station. Take another five minutes or so before the uh, initial boat lo initial uh, bolt loading is completed. And at that point, uh, Tom Jones and Bob Kerbeam will uh, be given a go to proceed on with the uh, installation of the uh, Destiny to Unity uh, heater umbilical connections and also the uh, ammonia umbilicals, which will provide uh, cooling from the uh, radiators that are mounted up on the P-6 truss element that was installed on the last shuttle flight back in uh, December. And uh, Beamer, cables are complete. You have a go to head onto the lab. Roger that. Houston Station, Atlantis, uh, for EVA. Uh, you probably said this, just wanted to check that uh, Tom's got to go to press with the P-612 umbilical connection. That is. And he's the Atlanta. If you copy, we're having a hard time getting F1 off with the leak on the F3. Would you like us to try and connect F3 to the lab? Affirmative. Beamer, connect F3 to uh, the lab. M5. What you're seeing there is the ammonia that they're referencing coming out of that uh, quick disconnect and the. Uh, the procedure for that, uh, when the when it's leaking out of that disconnect after he opened it, is to, uh, as soon as he is able to connect that uh, quick disconnect to the lab where it is where it is destined to be. It's simply the uh, quick disconnect that's leaking at this point, and it will stop as soon as he has uh, got it attached to the lab itself. We gotta get that. Um, gotta get that M1. Closed off. Understand, Beamer, you're going to try and get uh, get F1. Yep. Because that's where the leak's coming out. The leak's coming out of M3. This is Mission Control Houston. Just to recap uh, the events of the last uh, several minutes when. Uh, EVA uh, crew member Bob Kerbeam uh, began the task of uh, disconnecting and then reconnecting the fluid lines, which basically contain ammonia. One of them was uh, a bit bulky in terms of uh, being released from its uh, location on the uh, on the space station. Once he was able to uh, open that uh, quick disconnect. Uh, uh, as uh, was seen on the downlink, uh, a, a fair amount of uh, ammonia began escaping uh, from that uh, quick disconnect. If you can just hold off on those uh, deactivation steps for a while, we'd like to leave the CBM up for a few more uh, moments. Okay. And Atlantis Houston for Roman. 
Go ahead. Yeah, since you guys are going to be starting the connectors part one, just want to give you a go for step 10 on 7-41. That step is complete from the ground. Thank you, Jody. And just so you know, Roman, I did leave 205 in place. You the man. Ammonia that was leaking out of that quick disconnect, uh, it, it stopped immediately once... Um, once Bob Kerbeam had uh, installed it into the location where it is uh, was uh, headed, which was a uh, what was termed uh, on the air to ground as uh, location M5, which is on the uh, laboratory destiny itself. So at the present time, there is no ammonia leaking, and the plan uh, is being discussed on the ground as to how to proceed with the other ammonia uh, coolant line uh, connections, fluid line connections. In the meantime, uh, Tom Jones is uh, wrapping up the uh, heater cable, uh, tying that cable off uh, basically against the node and against the laboratory. And uh, Bob Kerbeam is uh, heading off to uh, do what's called part one of the uh, installation or connections of the uh, lab's uh, power and data umbilicals. And Atlantis Houston with the rest. Go ahead. Okay, what we'd like you to first do is disconnect F3 and inspect the connector inside of it uh, to see if there's any ice. Hopefully all the ice uh, will eliminate, uh, sublimate quickly. If there is ice within the connector, we need to physically uh, try and remove it. And uh, what we recommend for that is the hydrazine brush that's contained in the node bag. Subsequent to that, we then would like to connect the jumpers to the lab, that is F1 to M6 and F3 to M5. And if all goes smoothly, we'll press on with the other connectors. Okay, so understand we will first remove F3, which is currently on M5, and look for ice crystals. And if we find some inside, we'll need to get the hydrazine brush from the note bag to clean them out. And then, in any event, after that, we will go ahead and connect F1 to M6 and F3 to M5. And I take it uh, the order is not important. Copy, Mark. That's correct. Uh, the uh, connection order is nonspecific. Okay. Snap back. The submarine there. Okay. I'm going to throw the bail on F1 first. Okay. Good. F1 is connected. I see the white ring and the button popped up. Okay. Ready for F3. Wait, I understand. You just soft docked F1, correct? No, I connected it. I'm sorry. Sorry, they want me to check F3, don't they? Yeah, they just said soft dock F1. Sorry. I'm going to pull it back up then. And hold on. Atlantis, Houston, uh, no need to do that. You can leave it connected. Okay. Let me take off F3. Okay, it's not leaking. F3 is clean as a whistle on the inside. Can you can move it up to your right camera? My right camera. Hold on. How's that? Wait. 
gas point there. Let me see if I can get further away. Okay, that's fine. I think the problem is going to be a uh, focus anyway. And Atlantis yeah, Houston, clean. we're going to have to rely on your uh, uh, Mark 1 Mod 0 eyeballs. I don't think the camera will have the fidelity to pick it up, so we'll rely on your judgment. Yeah, okay. So let's go ahead and uh, connect uh, F3 to M5 beam. Okay. This view from uh, Bob Kerbeam's uh, helmet camera, close up of the fluid line connections on the Destiny module. So, uh, just so I'm making sure that I'm straight, uh, F1 and F3 are both connected completely. Yes, they are. And that connection completes loop A, the supply and return uh, loop of uh, fluid. There is a loop B connection, also two more cables. Part of it is uh, venting not required. Kerbeam now uh, halfway through the task of uh, running the umbilical lines for the coolant system on loop B. Loop A was the uh, loop that uh, one line, which was the return line that had the uh, initial leak in it. On the second uh, go round, there was no leak at all visible and uh, the connections were clean. Those were mated uh, without incident and now the first of uh, Two remaining uh, umbilicals has been mated uh, also without incident, so only one um, thermal control system or th thermal control loop uh, umbilical remains to be uh, seated. And again, this is to provide uh, the uh, necessary coolant lines uh, from the space station uh, to the uh, laboratory destiny. And that's down. So it all uh, second time around uh, installing the. Uh, ammonia coolant lines from the International Space Station Z-1 truss uh, structure to the uh, laboratory destiny. Time for the Orbit 1 team to hand over to the Orbit 2 team. Uh, Kelly Beck and Gerhard Tila will take you the rest of the way for the EVA and the rest of the day. Our compliments to Marsha on the smooth uh, ops with the arm and great work to uh, Tom and Beamer and Mark uh, for choreographing our, our little problem here at the end of the day here for at least for us the end of the day. Uh, Destiny has traveled a long road, and it's nice to see that it does and has indeed reached its final destination. And I'm sure Shep and company will enjoy it, their uh, newfound space on board. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey, Mario. Great job keeping up with all the things going on here and uh, keeping us on track, too. And uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Control team, a shift change has just been completed here. Uh, a couple of flight control positions will remain uh, through the rest of the uh, spacewalk activities. The uh, spacewalk began at 9.50 this morning, uh, central time, 10.50 a.m. Eastern time, approaching the five-hour point in this uh, scheduled six-and-a-half-hour long spacewalk. The uh, crew members are fairly close to being on the timeline, even with the uh, incident with the uh, leakage of ammonia from this coolant line, but all four lines now uh, and two loops have been connected. And the crew members will uh, wrap up the remaining tasks for today before heading back inside uh, to complete this first of three planned spacewalks. The uh, Destiny module now, as uh, Mario Runco uh, noted, uh, has reached its final destination. Uh,
a trip that began in Huntsville, Alabama, with uh, the prime contractor for the International Space Station program, Boeing, overseeing its construction, transportation to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, and ultimate uh, checkout uh, for the last year and a half uh, in Florida before uh, being delivered to orbit aboard Atlantis and now to the International Space Station. Here's the IMB app port man and his Node 1 cabin fan. M3 is also having a hard time. What do you think about using two of the caps that he has on his fish stringer now and just putting them on there in their place? And Atlantis, Houston, Roman, that sounds like a good plan. And by the way, for Tom's procedure, step nine is confirmed. Lead Flight Director Bob Castle with Capcom Mario Runco has okay. been completed. And the Orbit 2 team under Flight Director Kelly Beck with Capcom Gerhard Thiele is now in control. That handover too was delayed a little bit by the action relating to the ammonia leak uh, during the connection of the lines. Both those loops, four lines, supply and return on each side, have been completed. And the system is successfully in place. Crew members are now moving into a phase involving connection of utility lines, power and data cables. That among the last items on their okay, EVA plan. Okay, no FOD. The den radius is coming over and the pins are good too. Мы там. 